Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to today's tutorial. We are making an envelope journal and we're using envelopes to create the cover. So it's a journal, a junk journal, but uh, we are bypassing the whole cover making process. We are simply using envelopes. Now, you might have seen this idea done before, you know, slotting envelopes in together. I'll just show you how it looks like inside so you can see. Uh, it's a really quick project. So that's the part of the closure. Very, very quick project and a lot of fun to make. Obviously, the envelopes provide pockets. And then there's a junk journal in the middle here. And then at the back, um, I've got some more pockets because I used four envelopes. And the flap of one of the envelopes is my closure or part of my closure. So in this tutorial, we are going to make a journal together step by step. In fact, we will be making this one. We'll do everything. We'll do the embellishing, the binding, constructing all of it together. So let's get started. So it all started with a simple white envelope. And then I took that envelope and I tea dyed them. I have a few. I tea dyed them. And after they were dry, I put them through my embossing machine to create this uh, embossing effect. But it's not something that you must do. You can use your white envelopes without tea dyeing them and just decorate them and maybe ink the edges. Or you can just tea dye them. Or if you have an embossing machine, you can put them through the embossing machine. One thing that I'd like you to keep in mind when choosing your envelopes, let's take this one for example. So this is a very flimsy kind of an envelope. So something flimsy, I know if it doesn't come across on screen, but it's very thin and very flimsy. So something like this perhaps is not the best thing to use for this project because we are using envelopes as our cover. Uh, it probably won't last and it will rip very easily. The envelopes that I used are quite thick, sturdy, I mean nothing, you know, crazy. It's not cardstock, but you know, very good quality, quite thick, sturdy envelope. And I found them in a second hand shop. I was very lucky to find a whole bundle. So that's what I'm using. So see if you have something like that, or if you have an envelope maker, you can use your 12 by 12 sheets to create some envelopes and go from there. But that's what I was using. Just one thing I wanted to mention, when you're tea dyeing your envelopes, make sure after you take them out of the solution of coffee or tea or whatever you're using to tea dye or, you know, to distress, I guess, make sure that you leave your uh, envelopes open like this to dry, just in case if that sticky part, once it's drying, if it sticks down, then you can't open your envelope. The problem I had with these envelopes is they, the sticky part actually loses its stickiness. So um, my envelopes actually were able to be opened all the way like that. And then what I had to do for this project is just glue this back down to make sure that that side is closed. So just keep that in mind. For this project, I'm using four envelopes. And these four envelopes are going to be uh, constituting my cover and obviously the pockets inside. So the reason why I only chose four and not more is because I find uh, for what I'm making, because I wanted a little junk journal spot in the middle, um, if you have more envelopes than these pockets, it's quite hard to get uh, to put things in and out. And that's why I only chose to have four. But you can make a whole journal of just the envelopes. So that's probably the reason why I don't have instructions for this project, because you can take it many different ways. So I'll just show you how I made mine. I've got four envelopes and I'm going to start with two. And let me just see which one do I like the best for my cover. I like this because it's got this distressing over here. So this is going to be my cover. So now I'm going to choose two envelopes. I'll pop these away. And because I want this to be my cover, I want this to be out. I'm going to slot this one inside this one. It will make sense when you start making your project. So I have just slotted them inside one inside each other I guess I just slotted this one inside that one so now I'm going to add one on this side like that so I've got two on this side and now I need one on this side so that I have two on this side and two on this side so I'm going to going to take this one and slot it in here very easy so I have two envelopes here and two envelopes here. 
and these are obviously my pockets and then this is going to be my closure and that's my front cover so so easy you can if you want to keep building your little journal with just envelopes if you wanted to you can have a whole little journal uh, made up of just the envelopes you don't need the signature inside you can just have a little ephemera kind of uh, little project so that would be quite cool you can fill up the pockets decorate this uh, side here and you have a little ephemera kind of a holder so you can do that as well of course but i am only using the four envelopes so this is my cover now complete Next thing I want to do is make my signature. So I have just gone and chosen some papers that I want to put inside. So I have a vellum page here. I have a little scrapbook, uh, scrap, scrapbook page. I have, you know, a little off cut like that. I'm going to use it as a little page and just different sort of tones of paper. So this is Easter dye paper. This is tea dye. This is onion skin. And this is, I think this one was green tea. So I really love the effect of all these different types of colors. And now I'm going to make my signature and I'm using 10 pages and that's going to give me 40 sides. So 10 pages here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to cut these in two. So they'll give me another two and that gives me 10 pages. So I'm going to get that ready now. So these two pages, I just want to cut in half and then I'll have sort of uh, some, some that are longer, some that are shorter so that not all of my pages will be the same size. And I really like that look. So here are my 10 pages folded in half and now I just need to trim these long ones uh, down a little bit and how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to mark how high my journal or cover is. So I want my cover to be slightly larger so I'm just going to mark it here and now you could uh, what I could do is instead of trimming this off I can just have this you know fold it up this way and then make pockets but for this project i didn't want to do that because we already have pockets here from the envelopes and i didn't want to chunk it up too much because then it will be hard to pull things out of the pockets here so that's why i'm just going to trim these long pages down and of course i'll be keeping these little off cards because i can add them in my little scrappy booklets that i like to make so this is all ready to go and now I'm just going to place it all in my signature the way that I like. And here is my signature. So I like to have my pages, you know, using different tones and I just kind of scattered them throughout the way that I liked. So now I'm just going to double check that it fits nicely within my cover. Here we go, my cover. Let's see. It fits perfectly. I think I just want to trim this down a little bit because it's sticking out just a tiny little bit. So I'm going to trim that down. And here we go. Cover is ready. Signature is ready. And now what's going to hold my cover and everything in place is the binding. So that's why I love this because there's not much fussing about with making the cover. That usually tends to be the hardest part of making a journal, I guess. So I want to make sure everything is the right side, uh, right side up. This is going to be my front cover. Everything looks okay here. I think I like the placement of everything. Okay, I'm using this waxed uh, thread that I have. You can just use embroidery floss or whatever you have. So I've got this ready. And now I need to poke my holes. So I want to make sure everything is nice and snug in there. And I want my hole to be in the center, the first hole. So I am going to eyeball this process. But with the center hole, I just want to make sure that I am right in the center. If I possibly can without, you know, um, measuring anything. I could, I guess I could measure, but I don't know why. I just don't want to today. And now, so this looks like the center. I'm going to poke the hole there. And then my next hole will be, let's say, somewhere around here. And my third one will be eyeballing somewhere around here. 
and I'm just going to use a simple um, a pamphlet stitch so I'm going to go from the inside out this way and I kind of keep my uh, pokey tool in there just to hold everything in place until I'm ready to use that hole which is now so now I'm going to take it out and here we go the needle eye is quite large so I just like to use this little tool help me with the binding process and now I'm going into this hole over here and now back through the middle so make sure everything is nice and tight did that work it worked perfect I'm going to use my whatever this is called tool so you might have noticed that I don't cut my string uh, you know ahead of the binding and that's because I don't want to waste any thread so I actually trim it off at the end so now I'm going to just make sure that I'm not wasting anything but people generally like to cut their string ahead of time and then start the binding process so okay either way is fine so now making sure everything is tight I don't want any loose signatures in any of my projects so I just want to make sure everything is nice and tight and now I'm going to do a double knot so there's one and two and I'll just tie a little bow here and now that that's done I'm just going to you know work it in a little bit so that's a really quite simple little uh, journal to make isn't it with four pockets on the sides I like it I, I like it a lot the next thing I'm going to do is make my closure I like to use a little eyelet for my closure because the eyelet will also provide protection over here if you don't have eyelets and uh, you still want to protect this part here because you don't want your closure to rip right you know rip right through it you can use something like this maybe a little circle punch a little bit of cardstock that you glue on here maybe distress the edges ink the edges and then punch your little uh, hole with one of these cheap things whatever they're called hole punches I guess and then that can be your closure so uh, you know that's another option that you can do but I'm using an eyelet and I'm just going to do that now so I don't have a crocodile but I do have a silent setter I got this on eBay and this is what I use so here we go and now I'm going to pop my eyelet through there and now I just need to set the eyelet go back to my little tool and just set that eyelet okay look at this I made 10 of these journals okay 10 and the one that I'm doing on camera I totally stuff it up because I have my camera up above me and I couldn't lean down properly and I made a huge mess out of my eyelet so now I'm going to have to be creative and find a way to fix this problem I somehow moved the eyelet to the side and and ripped the whole thing so uh, let's see what I can do so now it looks like I'm actually going to be using this let's see if I can fix this problem because I'm not going to film this whole section again so let's see what we can do shall we I'm just going to glue this little circle down it might even end up looking even better than the ones that don't have this so usually you know we learn from mistakes and sometimes they make our things look even better so which way is the right way let's see it kind of has some sort of a italic writing so I want it to be the right way all right and glue that down okay so now that that's glued down I am going to poke a hole again through that same hole that I already have and then reapply my eyelet so let's see and here we go much better I don't know how that's gonna look I don't know it will be fine you know I'm not gonna throw the whole thing away just because I made a simple little mistake there it is fine we can make it work and now I am adding my closure so I'm using twine binding 
and I just measured you know approximately how much I need so I'm going to loop this through my eyelet and I like to start from the outside in here we go and I'm just going to loop that through and just gently you know gently gently pull it tight and that will be my closure here we go so I like to close the journal just so I can determine the length and now I can be done with that that can be my closure but I like to add some beads or buttons so that's what I'm going to do got everything ready here I'm going to use these two buttons I don't know how it's looking with that there but it's looking fine let's just say so I am going to loop these buttons through and what I did ahead of time is these uh, the twine binding when you cut it it tends to sometimes unravel so I just dipped this into a little bit of glue and waited for it to dry so now it's nice and firm so I can easily thread it through my button so that's one and now this one so I like one to be kind of higher and the other one to be a little bit lower so I'm happy with that placement and now I'm just going to tie a knot at the back that's my first one and now this one here I probably could have placed them a little bit lower but I think I think that will be all right yeah I think that looks all right and now I also like to add something down the bottom as well so I'm using these two metal kind of golden little beads so I'm just going to pop that through as well maybe there and then this one here so obviously you need if you're using twine binding you need beads that have a you know larger opening and I'm just going to tie a knot just checking where I like my knot maybe I think that looks good there nice and and tight and now this one here I think that looks okay so I can leave these long or maybe I'll I don't know let's I'm going to maybe trim them a little bit just so they're not so long and here we go the cover is done the closure is done and now the next thing I need to do is embellish my journal so to save time I prepared everything that I'm going to use in embellishing my journal just so you know I'm not rummaging around looking for stuff so I first thing I'm going to do is just do a little bit of an embellishment on my actual envelope so on the very first one I'm going to use this little circle die cut and and it says love just apply a little bit of glue there on this one here so all of this that I have here is from packaging you can see at the back you know some writing and stuff so I just use my little punches that I have so I'm just going to pop a little flower there they're just little touches that make it a tiny little bit more special now for this one at the back I might use this is also from packaging you can see so I am going to use this I just use my punches you know to cut out flowers and circles I like to as you know use and reuse and recycle and this packaging was beautiful so I thought why not and now I'm going to pop this flower also from packaging over the top and I'm just picking up any extra glue so that I don't have it sticking onto my page and here I'm going to do this little flower lovely okay so next thing I'm going to do um, I decided to keep my covers blank I didn't do anything on the covers because I think you know this looks quite nice just the way it is so I actually am not doing anything in the covers but you know there's you can of course so over here now I want to do a little this is just a little 
a few little different bits and pieces of paper that I've sewn together and I'm using a butterfly cutout to finish it off and this is going to be my pocket so first I'm going to glue the pocket down and as you can see again you know I tea dyed some scrap paper that has writing on the other side and now I'm just going to add my butterfly in the middle there I probably could have inked these edges but I don't know is it too late I don't think it's too late maybe I can do it like this gently that's all right I'm I'll just leave it okay there's one thing I wanted to show you so in my front pocket I'm going to put a couple of things I am going to put um, a large journaling spot type thing I'm going to put one of these cards this is these are images from a book that are cut out and glued onto some tea dyed watercolor paper so I made like little postcard postcard type thing and this is a stamped image on also some cardstock and then maybe this little it seems like there's a butterfly theme so you as I just want to show you something when you're putting things in and taking things out it's quite snug in here so there's a chance of the envelope ripping so it all depends on the kind of envelope that you're using so what I like to do is very very carefully just shorten this tiny little bit over here I'll show you in a moment you'll be able to see I don't know if you can see this tiny little bit that I've cut off and now I'm just going to cut it off and that gives me a little bit more space here for you know uh, less chance of it ripping I guess so I'm going to do the same on this side I know that the lightning isn't the best today I apologize about that um, it's just the way it is there's nothing I can do about it you know so I can either not film for another century I just had a tiny little bit of free quiet time today it's hectic here homeschooling lockdowns kids at home all of that so I'm just doing what I can and I hope that you can see what I've done see how I made a little bit more space so then pu putting things into the pockets and taking them out makes a tiny little bit of you know less stress over here gives you extra room and that's also another reason why I only used four envelopes and not six or eight or whatever because the thicker the journal the more issues you will have with putting things in and taking things out okay so that's what I'm going to do there and then maybe over here this really needs to dry but I like to put like a little journaling spot maybe rounding the corners will make it look even better I think it's the little touches that make a project special so I'm going to pop that in there and I really like that all right so for my next page this I'm just doing this to give you ideas and what you can you know how you can embellish your journal I'm going to use these pretty papers and I'm going to pop that into this pocket here and I might come back later I'm not going to do it now just so we can get this tutorial finished but I might do the same over here just trim that excess off a little bit on my first page I'm just going to add little bits and pieces I'm going to put this here so you can see uh, just you know just little extra interest interesting little ephemera pieces you know to make it a bit fun and I'm just going to clip this onto the page and I will use a black paper clip just because you know there's a bit of black going on so on my next page I'll be using a little stamp see I'm prepared everything is in order everything I'll be doing so just a bit of book page like this ink the edges a little bit same on the stamp ink the edges a little bit and now I'm going to glue that down okay so now that's glued down I've got my stamp a little bit crooked right there okay next page I'm simply going to pop a little journaling spot there perhaps it will look nice if I round the corners so let's do that first and I'm got this time I'm going to use a gold paper clip maybe it will be nice to have a charm hanging off I didn't put any charms on this journal because of this closure so as you're closing opening the journal it might get caught on the charm which is why no charm for this journal all right let's see what else can we do I just want to embellish this little page here so I have a roll of you know off cuts that I sew together I have a video on that so I'm going to link it 
somewhere here if you wanted to have a look paper ruffle rolls it's called and they always add such a beautiful touch to a page or any project just a little bit of interest there and that's it for this page all right i'm not going to embellish every page just a few pages here and there so once again i'm just using some pretty paper another little black paper clip and this uh, little die cut that says love something like that okay now over here i want to use this little die cut which is perfect actually because it goes with this at the front here so this is also from packaging perfect and that's going to be a tiny little pocket and i want to put a sentiment here i'll be using this little sentiment here so this is just pretty much basically a words printed on um, sticky paper and i actually have a free pdf if you haven't downloaded it yet with all sorts of little sayings and sentiments and things like that i will link it down below and up here somewhere so that if you want to grab that you can pop it somewhere in the middle and now i want to glue the bottom part down so that can be a little tuck spot just down here on the page and i'm going to tuck in this pretty little piece of paper round the corners oh drop everything everywhere that didn't quite uh, work because of the type of the paper it's very almost like material like i guess so anyway i can do that with my scissors and then that can go in there it's just a pretty little look at it, it looks so beautiful okay but i didn't want to tuck it all the way in because that's not dry yet so i'm just going to put it there and then when that's dry i can tuck it all the way down and it's not going to fall out so i'm just going to put it there for now now i want to embellish this page so i'm simply going to use one of these pretty pieces of paper and a little ticket it's the little things right so I love those journals and I didn't even clip that onto the page I love those journals full of flowers and lace and full of you know chock full journals I love them so much but when I make journals I tend to like really you know writing journals basically so I don't overdo it and everything that I put in uh, can be clipped out and taken out and moved to other places so that's just the way I like to create on the very last page I'm going to add a few different pretty pretty pieces of paper so some roses and birds and stuff so I might use a gold paper clip so we have black we have gold and I don't want them to be all uniform so I might you know just do it like this so that you can see all three pieces of paper okay and now in this pocket i'm going to place these are like little um cards i guess and the you know map of the world over here i tea dyed it and then it opens up its cardstock i'm going to pop that in here and once again i'm going to come back to this and uh, trim this off a little bit so it's easier to pop things in and take things out and then in this last pocket i'm just going to add a couple of tags so i can go ahead and embellish the tags add things up here but i like to just leave them as they are for the person who you know gets this journal they might want to embellish the tags themselves and you know what that completes the journal i mean i don't know honestly i usually for a lot of my projects i say they're quick and easy but this has to be the quickest journal i've ever made in my life and the reason for that is because there's no fussing around with the cover we have the pages making up the cover so uh, i think the the thing that takes up most time is thinking what should i do on this page and oh what should i do here and because i've already made 10 of these journals i knew exactly where i'm putting things and how i'm embellishing them and that's the reason why i often like to make a lot of uh when i'm making one project i like to make a lot of them at the same time because it takes away that thinking process and i can be more efficient and quick and that's not to say that i can you know i'm a production company i can't make 100 journals in a week uh, some other crafters can and they tend to be 
you know, making so many journals at once, very uh, embellished journals, and I simply cannot do that. But I'm quite happy with how quick this project was done. So I probably should have left these hanging lower. I didn't take that into account because I didn't fill up my uh, journal and then do the closure. So I can go back and move these down a little bit. Uh, that's what I'm going to do now. So just keep in mind when you're doing your closure, uh, just keep in mind that it's going to be bulked up. So you need to leave it a little bit longer. It still works, but I would like it to dangle a little bit lower. Okay, here we go. I managed to move them down a little bit by opening the knots and then uh, move them down so perhaps maybe leave the adding you know the closure the buttons and stuff right at the end after you have stuffed your journal full let me know what you guys think let me know if you'll be making some of your own this idea can be taken in many different ways i know that it's you know there's a lot of these types of journals out there using envelopes and just putting envelopes together to make a journal but I hope you got some inspiration today. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.